all right welcome back guys now one more thing before we get started if you go over into the front view now you can see this is the center of the world okay so the x-axis could act as the ground of the uh, whole viewport area so I want to move this up so that the tires are sitting right on top of the uh, x-axis so that's what we're gonna do now so go in this view and press 5 to get into auto graphic select these three of course the top view is not gonna be affected because it's just top view so let's get on to front now select those three and get on to front so press G and then Z hold on control and shift and move that right there so as you can see it's on the x-axis I'm gonna move it up a little bit more the Z axis like that so it's sitting on it right now and there's one problem with the side view blueprints not a major problem but just something I want you guys to notice now I made these tires too big on a side view because I don't know I just made them too big so you can see right here it intersects with the ground line there which is the Y axis so just ignore that everything else is aligning very well so that is all I wanted to pinpoint you guys on so now we're gonna start modeling this vehicle so yeah let's jump right in so press shift and S and then choose a uh, selection to world I mean Keza to world origin so you make sure it's right in the center there press 7 to get into top view press shift and A and choose a plane so with that plane selected press tab to go into edit mode right here and yeah so we can let's just add in a line right in the middle by pressing ctrl and R put a cut loop in the middle select this two and press X and delete it so there's a line in the middle we only need one vertex so select this vertex and delete that vertex right here so there's only one vertex left here so I'm gonna press G and then Y move that over here so it's pretty bright but I'm pretty sure we can get over it I haven't really found a way to decrease the brightness of this uh, background images but if I do I'll let you guys know and then we can drop the brightness a bit but for now we can only work like this so press G and then Y and then let's move it right over here so it's right here just move it in the center over there and I want to press E and then extrude this all the way to the very end now before you continue working let's split the work view I mean the viewport up so hover your mouse right up here click and then drag to the left to open up another one and then click right here select image editor yeah I think that's it image editor and click on open now find wherever you put your I mean the zip file of the images I mean the extracted images that I gave you guys in the link with the link in the description so just open it up wherever the images are and let's select um um so let's select this one right here this very one here so this is what we're gonna work with so this is the vertex right here and it's right at the edge where the whole thing this this is what we're creating right now the hood All right so this is where it ends so we're gonna end it over there like that press G and let's move that in a little bit more so now we're gonna press E and then drag this all the way down here to about there press press no press E move that over here and let's add in a mirror modifier now let me just close this down a little bit so with that object selected go over to your modifiers button with this wrench click on add modifier and add in a mirror modifier so you can see the mirror is working right there Ctrl Z. The mirror is working right there. So, with that in there, just enable clipping here on the mirror modifier. So, just enable clipping, and that allows this one to just keep together so they don't move around anywhere from the center, like that. So, now select this one back in and press E and then drag it. And once it gets to the center, you can see it merges right there. Keep it in the center like that. okay alright so let's move up here press ctrl and R and hold your mouse over this edge right here left click and press G twice slide that all the way to the edge here 
right here and um, yeah let's add one more G twice slide that all the way to here and for now let's ignore let's ignore this bump that is over here this extrusion I mean this uh, face I mean what do I call it this bulge on the hood right here ignore it so that is what these lines are for but for now let's just ignore it and let's delete these three extrusions we made here so just select these three and click on vertex now select these vertices here let's get onto the side view it's right down here so we're going to move them up on the z axis so press g and then z and move it up in the z axis to there so let's get over here okay I think my middle mounts isn't working what is going on alright I think it came back I don't know what happened there my, my scroll button wasn't it just stopped working all of a sudden but it's working now so let's get to work so select this middle one right here let's get on to the side view now I'm gonna press G and then Z and move this up to here like that G and then Z right in the center like that now I'm gonna select these three over here get onto the side press G and then Z and let's move this up to there G and then Z move that up to right there now I want to deselect this, get onto the side again, G and then Z. Move that down to here, deselect that. So we only have one left at the edge there. Now G and then Z. Do I have it selected? Yeah, I do. So G and then Z, and move that down to right there. Like that. So this is what we have for the hood. Now I'm going to get over to the top view. And I'm going to press E and then Y and extrude this all the way back to press Z and select wireframe to go into wireframe view. So we select that all the way back to about here. And then with that selected, let's just press X. Make sure your active element is this one, all right? So just hover your mouse there and then click on that line to select the whole thing to make this one the active element as you can see here it's the active element right there indicated by that white dot on it okay so with that done let's just move it a little bit up like this and press alt and period I don't know if it still works but no it doesn't so we, we have to change that over here instead so change it from median point to active element and let's get back down here so it's going to scale towards this center one right here. So press S and then X and scale this in until it falls. Watch the outer two vertices and make sure they fall right in the center like that. So deselect them now. I mean deselect. Deselect them now. Alright, deselect them now. And press S and then X again and make sure this one falls in the center as well. Alright, so you can see, let's change the mud cup right now. So I'm going to click up here and change up here. Um, what am I selecting? Yeah, so change the mud cup from this one to say, let's go with this. No, not that one. Let's go with. Um, not so sure. Alright, let's go with the clay one for, for now. So just select the clay mud cup and I'm assuming you guys have already installed it, so that should be a that shouldn't be a problem. Now select these three again and let's get onto the side view again. Make sure this is the active selection right here. And then let's get to the side view now. So I'm gonna move this down, get into wireframe, press G and then Z move this down to here 
Now this one right here, we're going to move up to fold in this line. So press S and then Z. And make sure it scales right into the center there. And then deselect it. Deselect that one now. Press S and then Z. Make sure the one there falls right in here. Again, deselect this. S and then Z. Make sure it falls right in the center. Like that. So this is what we have so far. Let's get over to the top view. Get into edit mode. And let's add in, say, I don't know, maybe four or five. Let's add in five. <coughs> that may be too much, but I'm adding in, okay, yeah, let's add in five. It's good enough. Now let's go into wireframe mode. And then we're going to drop each of these vertices on their respective lines. So press S and then X. Now let's move this right in the center here. I think they all fall in perfectly except for this one. You need to fold right in the center. It's a little bit to the edge. So deselect this one now. Press S and then X. Center. Deselect this. S and then X. Right in the center like that. Move on to the next one. Make sure the act active element is always at the one at the center here. You can see that is my active element by it being white. Alright. So you can see now this is the active element and now this is the active element. Just make sure of that and also make sure to change it to active element, the pivot point, to active element. Now press S and then X again. Right in the center, deselect it, S and then X. Right in the center, like this. Deselect it, S and then X, right in the center like that. Do the same with this, all the way down the line. So, move that in. Move this in, move that in. Do the same with the side, S and then X. Move that in. Same with the side. Move that in. Same with the side. Move that in. And the final one, S and then X. Move this in here, deselect it. S and then X, move that in here, deselect it. And then let's move this one there as well. So this is what we have so far. And you can see it's shaping up to be the hood right now. So let's get onto the side and align them in the side view as well. So you can see they are very disaligned. So let's start with this one. Select it and make sure the center one is the active element. Now get onto the side view, wireframe view. And let's press G and then Z. Let's move this up so it's in the center right here. And um, yeah, so press S and then Z until this one falls in the center. S and then Z. So that one folds in the center, S and then Z, like that. Now move on to the next one. Select it. Press Z and then Z. Let it fall on the line like that. And then S and then Z. Deselect this, S and then Z. Deselect that, S and then Z. Right in there. Move on to the next one. G and then Z. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm only aligning the each vertex with its respective line here. So the first one right in the top, deselect it, press S and then Z, next one. And you can see I'm scaling in a specific axis, the Z axis, alright? Because it's already aligned in this axis. So I want to align it in this axis now. <clears throat> and that is what I'm doing. So G and then Z. S and then Z. Falls right in the center, deselected S and then Z. Falls in S, deselected S and then Z. Falls in there. Next one. Press G and then Z. Falls in there, S and then Z. It's in there, deselect this, S and then Z. In there, deselected S and then Z. And the last one falls in there. So it's aligning in every view now, very nicely. So we got that sort of oval top looking like that. So let's see how it looks in front view and you can see it falls right on the blueprint line. So we don't really need to do anything much on this view. It all falls there, you can see. It all falls on it. It's just a little misalignment, but everything else is fine. <coughs> yeah, everything else is fine. <coughs> so let's get on to the top view now. Now I'm going to select this one right here. And um, now let's select these three here instead. 
right so press B select no not B you should have just you know it's just right click so just right click hold it down and select all of this like that <coughs> and press shift and D move that over here rotate it 90 degrees and move that here press G don't let it get to the center because right it once it gets into the center you can't move it from there again until you disable the clipping so don't let it get to the center just align it right here and make sure the active element is this one up here like that so press S and then Y scale that in and as you can see these two are separated over here until they start getting over here and it seem to become one line but not much no much of one line they are a little bit separated but since these lines are thick you can't really see that separation <coughs> sorry so all we're gonna do now is to take this two and let's press G and then Y make sure this one is almost say if we are to divide this into two lines okay say around here the center of this line will be right here so let's press G and then Y make sure the one falls in there and the center of the line below will be somewhere around here so that is good enough like this so press E and then X now move that all the way to the left until it meets in there to merge it in like that so press G now and then move this over to about say here like this so we're gonna select I think that is the active selection press S and then Y scale it away until it falls around there like that so we're now going to select these ones as well I'm going to select them as well, including these ones, and press W, and then choose, um, okay, so bridge edge loops is in here, so let's just search it by pressing the space bar, and type in bridge, so you're going to see it, bridge edge loops, like that, so once you do that, you're going to see an option appears right down here, bridge edge loops, open that, and let's increase the number of cuts to, say, 4, I think 4 is enough, and let's decrease the smoothness, Okay, so that isn't working too well because I think these two are too far apart. So let's undo that and try again. And let's move these a little bit more forward to about an equal distance away, say. I'm eyeballing it with this side from the curve and this side from the curve. So let me just move that back a little bit. So I think, yeah, so S and then Y. Scale that out a little bit. And now let's select these ones again bridge edge loops enable I mean open up this and increase the number of cuts to three and let's chop the smoothness right to something like this so we're gonna we're gonna rearrange these ourselves because as you can see it's not really matching so I'll press G and move that over here select this press s and y yeah to space it out a little bit, select this one, press G, move that in the center right there, press S and then Y, then S and then X, move it to the center like that. We're going to do the same with this side, press G, move that to right there, S and then X, S and then Y, and we have it in right there. So that does it solid. So that does it for that area. So we only need edge loops in here now to fill to fill this area up. So I'm gonna get to the front view and let's add in let's add in maybe three for now. Let's get on to the top view. So all that we're gonna do now is to is to select this one, press G and Z, move that up in the Z axis until it falls right on the line like that so this one is a little bit out so I'm gonna move that down a little bit like that select this one press G and then Z move that out a little bit do the same thing over here move it up a little bit like that so that is nice and now let's add in say two let me just move that here a little bit select these four now and press F select this two and press F until yeah, so let's leave it here for now. And I'm not so sure. Let me let me go to the top view. Yeah, so everything is aligned in there. So let's just select these ones now. All of these. 
get into wireframe, press B, select all of this, press G twice to align it in a straight line with this one. E select this one now, press G twice to align it nicely in a diagonal like that. We're going to do the same thing here. So select all of this, G twice, slide it back, hold down control, drag to deselect and drag this back as well. So I think if we add in another one over here, I'm just adding a loop cut in here. Let me select these two and press F and let's just add one more loop cut in the middle here. Uh, what we can do is to basically let's just let's get rid of all the new vertices we just added in so delete those vertices select this one dissolve edges select these dissolve edges so let me see I'm gonna add the first one into about here to match up with this one all right and then we're gonna add in three or two more two more should be good enough and I want to select this, press G and then Z. Let's move that up to here. Select this, press G and then Z. Move that up to here. Select this, press G and then Z. And move that up to here. Like that. So we're going to get over here now. So this should take one over here. This should take another. And there should be one across the side that goes through to the other side. So I'm going to add in two in here. I'm going to select this two and this four here and press F. Press Ctrl and R, add one in the middle here, select this two, and press F twice to fill it in. Like that. Now we're going to take, um, let's add one more in on this side, get onto the front view. And let's press G and then Z. Now it shouldn't go up too much, okay, so just look at the curvature and make sure it's a nice flowing curvature. This is where it was before, you can see it's flat, so we, we just want to make that a nice curvature like that. You can see it looks good. So with that done, we're going to select these four now and press F. I'm going to press Ctrl and R through here. And select this to press F twice. Select this to and press F twice. So you can see what we have. We're going to get to the side now. This one isn't matching too well. So we're going to take these ones here. With this being the active element. And then let's get onto the side. So we're going to match this curvature as much. So let's just scale this up in the z-axis, or no, bad idea. Let's, let's just move them instead. So press G and then Z. Match the curvature on this one first. So just match this curvature. And I think that is looking good. So deselect it. Press G and then Z. Match the next one. I think that is good. Deselect it. G and then Z. And yeah, pretty much that should be it. So. Let's add in a mesh, I mean a subdivision surface modifier now. So click on add modifier and add in a subdivision surface. Increase that up to 2. Yeah, viewport. So 2. And keep the render also at 2. And now select this and under shading. Is it shading? Yeah. Under sh no, 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 no. In case you clicked it like I did, go back to the layout and takes you back here. What I wanted to select it, select was um and uh, um where is this thing? I think it's here. I want to shade this thing smooth but it's a completely different thing in Blender 2.8 so let me just search it and see shade smooth. So <clears throat> just search it in your search tool you should find it here and click on it. So you can see it shades it smooth for us. So now this is the time we change the matcap now. So we're going to change the matcap. Press N. No, it's here instead. We change the matcap to this red one here. So it's very reflective. So you can see the reflection goes through very smoothly. That's what we're looking to achieve here. So in the next video, what we'll do is we'll add in bevel modifiers around this and around that. In fact, let's, let's do that right now. Let's do it right now. So just press Ctrl and R through here. Press E to align it with the top and move it up there. So take a look at the bevel. Make sure you're getting the right amount. So to add in the bevel, let's just get rid of this. Let's just get rid of this markup. Where is this thing? Yeah, so just let's use the brown one for now. Or uh, maybe this one. Yeah, let's go with this one. This one shows it more. 
So go back into edit mode, press ctrl and R on this side this time. And in order to ensure that the distances between these two are equal, what I'm going to do is, you know what, no, let's keep it this way instead. So press ctrl and R, left click, press E, and then F, and align it to the other side, and move it in like that. So I think that is too much bevel, so I'm going to move this out a little bit, E and then F. Move it out to about here, do the same thing at the bottom, G twice, E, and let's just move that here. So I think that is good enough bevel, like that. So over here as well, we're going to press Ctrl and R, press E, and move that in to about, that one is a little bit more sharper, so something like that. Alright, so with that done, now we're going to add in a bevel through here, and as you can see, if we try to do that, it doesn't really work well. So instead, we're going to use the insert tool to insert it in. So just click on that vertex in the corner, hold down Ctrl and Shift, and click on the last one out there to select that whole face. With that done, just press I on your keyboard to insert the faces, like this, until you have that bevel you need. And you can see it inserts in the middle as well, but we don't want that. So I'm going to press T, no, not T, it's right down here, Insert Faces and enable or disable boundary All right so it's not going to add any it's not going to add any extra line at the boundaries of the mesh like that so that adds it in nicely like that and this is what we have like so so let's change it back to the reflective markup and you can see we have a little bit of a problem here, so let's try and then fix that right away. And I think that is because Yeah, so let's let's get to the side here. And yeah, this is the reason. You guys can see it. It's right here. We didn't align this one properly to meet up with the line over here. Everything is going diagonal and all of a sudden it changes and go up straight in this angle here. So let's fix that right now. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, so that is true. You can see right here, it's not falling there. So I'm going to take these, this one here, press H to hide it. And I'm going to get to the front view. Hover your mouse over this, press L, and press H to hide it. So I'm going to select all of this. Let's hide this one as well for now. How about this one? And press G and Z. Let's move this down until it falls right about there. Like that. Okay. So, first off, let's just get rid of the pebbles that we added in. So, dissolve edges. And I don't know if this will work, but let me dissolve that edge. Wireframe. Yeah, it worked. So, Let's just hide this, these now. Press L over this and hide it. And now let's get to the front view again. Wireframe. And select this one. Make sure it's the active element. So let's just, yeah. I forgot about these bevels as well. Get rid of these ones too. Let's get to the front view now. Select this, hide it. L over this and hide them. So front view. Select all of these now. Press S and then Z. And we're going to align them in the center like we did the others. I forgot to do that. Forgive me. S and then Z over here as well. Select these. G and the Z axis. S and then Z. S and then Z. Select these ones as well. G and the Z axis. S and then Z. D select this. S and then Z. Right here as well. G and Z. S and then Z. S and then Z. Crap. S and then Z. Forgot to bring these ones in, so I'm going to do that now. S and then Z. S and then Z. G and then Z. Move it down. D select this. S and then Z. Nope. And then this one. No. Select it. 
S and Z. Active elements. S and Z. S and Z. Nice. Now this one G and Z. S and Z. Right in the center. S and Z. Right in the center. Like that. So now they are, they should be on it very nicely. It's only falling back a little bit, but don't worry about that. We're good. So press Alt and H to bring everything back now. And you can see for yourself. We still <clears throat> still have a little bit of a problem. I don't know why this is happening, but let's just let's select them. Deselect this. Press G and then Z. And then let's move that up to yeah full right on the line here instead. And let's select these ones. Press G and then Z until this one right here falls on it. Deselect all the ones here. Hold Control. Deselect them. Make sure there's the active element S and then Z. Make sure they all fall in the center like that. So. That is looking good. That is looking very good. So, in order to make sure these sides are acting very well, I'm going to press G twice, select only these lines here. Press G twice, slide it all the way here, and press G twice and slide it back to the center. I'm going to bump this up again. Now, so I'm going to press G, and I'm going to move that up to follow the curvature. Okay, like that. So that should be good. Now we're going to insert this and see if the floor is still there. So we're going to select this. Hold Control and Shift, select that. And let's press I to insert the face. Right in there. And let's add in a loop cut in here. Now let's see. Okay, so that worked a little bit. Now we just have to move this one away from this edge here because you can see it's it's sharpening it and we don't want that so press ctrl z to get rid of the insertions select this one let's get to the side view i'm going to deselect the ones right down here i'm going to press g twice and slide these back to i don't know about the center say around here should be good yeah so let's try again Select the whole thing. Let's hit I to insert again. Control and R in here. And let's see how that looks. So that is much better now. So you can see that is way much better now than the initial one. So that looks good. We're going to keep it. So just press G twice and move this in better now. Press E and then F and align it with the other side. Now we're going to do the same thing here E and then F. Move that here, do the same here, E, and then let's move that up to there. Okay, this one is more less beveled, so G twice, and E and then F to align it with this side. Move it back a little bit to reduce the bevel. Do the same here, E, move it back a little bit to reduce the bevel, like that. So you can see the surface is very smooth now. That, that was what we're trying to achieve this whole time. So let's select all of these again. We're going to insert it one more time if it favors that. So that is. So let's just press I and you can see. Alright, so let's not insert it. Let's keep it as this. Let's keep it as this. So that is looking good. I'm thinking we should fix something small here to reduce the um, the whole curvature problems we're having. So I'm going to select all of these here. Let's just try this. I'm going to select all of these here. I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to slide them back to the position they were in before. And I think that was around here. Yeah, that is about it. So I'm going to get to the top view now. And here's what I'm going to do. I want to close this one in here and close this one in here. I'm going to control the curve around here with just one um, loop cut right here. So select all of these here. 
of these right here press G twice and let's slide it in to there select all of these as well press G twice and slide it into there so I'm going to press A to select everything and in the search bar type in remove remove doubles okay so that isn't shown let me see W remove doubles is in here so instead press control Z I can't find remove doubles so let's let's dissolve this instead so we're gonna dissolve it like that so dissolve the edges like that and I think that will be better so now we're gonna move this until it falls right in the line like that All right so you can see it right there so just move it like that till it falls in like that and that looks way much better so now we just have to move it down in the z-axis a little bit so G and then Z move that down in the z-axis a little bit and nice that fixed it way much better than what we initially have so yeah I want to end here and we'll continue in the next video I'm going to switch back to the silver markup so that we can see it's way much better so this is where I'll end and we'll continue in the next video so just follow the tutorial every step of the way and before you know it we have this whole car here in the viewport ready for texturing thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video